Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, I'd like to share with you a few exercises that will help you grow as pianists or keyboard players. And we'll go through them, start slowly, simply, and slowly work up the difficulty. Uh, you know, of course, each exercise should be practiced on its own. They're not, you don't have to play all of them. Okay, so we're gonna start with a simple arpeggiation. So take your right hand and put your fingers on a C major chord. So basically you're playing your thumb, which is your first finger in C, second finger in E, third finger in G, and fifth finger on C. And what you should play is an arpeggiation that sounds like this. So the basic uh, sequence is C, E, G, C, G, E, C, E, and then you repeat it. The goal is not to be fast, but to be accurate, to hit each note with equal force and with equal duration. So make all notes have the same dynamics and the same length. That's much more important than playing fast. Play as slowly as you need to make sure that you play this uh, correctly. Correctly meaning having equal dynamics and equal duration for the notes. Uh, now, once you've mastered this, the next exercise will be to do this with your left hand. So I'm gonna place it like this here same shape, C, and now I'm playing C with my fifth finger, E with my fourth finger, G with my second finger, and this C up here with my first finger. And here you would play the exact same pattern in the exact same way. You'll probably notice that this is a more difficult than in your right hand for two reasons. First of all, your left hand is usually weaker than your right hand when you start off. And the other thing is that this kind of forces you to exercise these two fingers, you know, your fifth and fourth finger, which is challenging because these fingers are usually the weakest on both hands, you know, this hand as well. But this is an exercise, so that's the purpose of it. You're supposed to sort of get to work on your weak parts, right? Let's move on to the next exercise. For this, we're gonna go back to this arpeggiation in the right hand, and this time repeat it, but go up the white scale, the C major scale. So each time we're gonna take this shape, play it as we, you know, the, the pattern I've shown you, and then move it up by one note, so to speak, and repeat it, and then again, and then again, and then again, 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 and again, until you get back to the original shape an octave higher. So basically, you're playing As before, remember to play as slowly as you need to make sure that you hit the notes with equal force and hold them for an equal amount of time each note. Now you can of course, as you can see, extend this to your left hand. So you could play something that, like this. Again, this is going to be challenging because you're working on these two fingers in your left hand. 
Let's move on to one more arpeggiation uh, exercise, uh, which goes like this. Go back to this C major shape in the right hand, and we're going to extend it. So we're going to play... And we can repeat this, you know, a couple of times. What I'm playing here is I'm arpeggiating the shape and then I'm arpeggiating again the second set of notes, which is, so I'm playing C, E, G, C, and next E, G, C, E. Then I'm going down C, G, E, C, G, E, C, E. As before, you can do two things now. You can, once you've mastered this, you can move this shape up the white scale, the C major scale. Uh, and it would sound something like this. And so on and so on. And you can replicate this with your left hand. By the way, working on this with your right hand now really works on your, again, fourth and fifth fingers because you're stretching them as you're playing this set of notes here for C major. So you can do this for your left hand as well. Right? You can take this shape. play it or page it up and down and what I'm playing is C E G C E G C E C G E C G E C E and pay attention to the fingers I'm using fifth fourth second one fifth fourth Second, first, second, fourth, fifth, first, second, fourth, fifth, fourth. And as with the right hand, you can move this up the keyboard. so on and so on. Once you've mastered these two exercises, or actually any of these exercises in both the right and left hand, and you're looking for extra challenge, try doing both hands simultaneously. For example, if you're doing the first exercise, try playing it with both hands. So you're playing the exact same set of notes, uh, in this case two octaves apart, and here comes in another difficulty that's, you know, that this exercise works on, which is the coordination between both hands. You'll find that even though you're playing the exact same notes, it's still challenging to get both hands to sync together, to play the exact same note, notes at the exact same time, even if you can play each hand separately perfectly. So this is a good exercise to work on your hand coordination. And you can do this with anything you play. So work on an exercise in the right hand, work on the same exercise in the left hand, and then replicate them. Play both at the same time with both hands. Let's do another exercise. 
This exercise works on your scale playing, and we're going to play a C major scale, but we're going to add a little twist at the end. So basically, What I'm playing here is C, D, E. Pay attention to the fingering, by the way, it's very important. C, D, E. Look at how I pivot my thumb underneath the third finger. F, G, A, B, C, B, C, A, C, G, C, F, C. And then I can repeat. And as before, we can take this shape and move it up the keyboard. so on. And you can do the exact same thing with your left hand. Now actually, when you play the left hand, what I suggest you do is not play the exact same thing. Because the kind of interesting thing is if you play the exact same thing, you're actually working on different fingers. Here you're working on your fifth, fourth, and third fingers. But here, you're working mainly on your first, second, and third fingers. These are fairly strong to start out with, and you don't really... I mean, of course you want to uh, have exercises to work on these too, but when you're starting out, you really want to start out with the weakest ones, which are fourth and fifth, a little bit of third. So you can play the mirror image of this. Basically, it's the descending scale. which what I'm playing is I'm starting with a thumb on the C, B, A. Now I'm pivoting, I'm moving my thumb beneath my third finger and I'm hitting the C. It's not the C, sorry, the G. F, E, D, C, D, C, E, F, C, G, C. And now you can move down. Sorry. so on. Let's do another exercise. This exercise works on kind of playing successions of notes rapidly. Now most keyboards, especially synth weight keyboards, which are I think this is much easier to do on. If you're playing on piano this is going to be much more of a challenge. Uh, if you play the same note, you want to play it twice in succession fast, what you have to do is you have to hit it, let's say, once with your second finger, raise it up, and hit it with your thumb, your first finger. Now, pianos have a mechanism that prevents you from doing this really, really fast. Synth actions, again, are much easier. You will be able to do this a lot easier than you do this on a piano. So if you're playing this on a piano, this will be challenging on a synth a little bit less. And once you get... The 
the hang of it, of playing two notes rapidly in succession, try going for three notes. So for three notes you're playing, you're hitting it once with your third finger, raising it, hitting it with your second finger, and raising it and hitting it with your thumb. Now, you can have some fun with this, you can take a melody that you like and you can play it with these repeated strikes, let's say triplets of notes. You don't really have to keep time for this. Uh, just make sure that you hit each note, you know, that you hear each one very clearly. So you can take something like, you know, the Star Spangled Banner. So it's a kind of a fun way to work on your this skill and, and you need it quite, you know, if you're playing flashy synth solos, if you're playing cl quick classical pieces, this is going to come up sooner or later. So it's something that's useful to kind of have under your belt and of course you can do the same thing with your left hand. It's kind of more of a right hand skill though but still good to also have it uh, mastered for your left hand. Last exercise for this video I'd like to leave you with has to do with uh, octaves. So basically uh, octaves are kind of a really essential skill that you're gonna have to learn if you want to master the keyboard and this means you know either playing octaves And also alternating, have this sort of trill ability. And as before, what I suggest you do is you pick a melody that you like and play it with octaves. So, you know, start with something simple. Let's say Mary had a little lamb. Right? So take this simple melody and play it with octaves. And again, be sure to play it properly, you know, the same, you play the notes at the right duration with equal intensity, equal dynamics, uh, just using octaves. And play it as slowly as you need to get this exercise right. Two variations on this could be, well, first of all, you can play this in the left hand. Left hand, by the way, really needs octaves because it kind of gives you this double bass sound. Uh, so you, you're going to play, play a lot of double bass kind of octave sounds in the left hand when you learn to play either classical or pop music, so it's good to have this mastered. So you can play the exact same thing, let's say Mary had a little lamb. And as you progress, what you can do is you can take more and more complex melodies. They can be either faster or have larger jumps. You know, let's say Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star you have this, this jump, which is pretty challenging when you're starting out. And again in the left hand. Now two variations on this uh, that you can do is you can play, let's say, not the, you know, when you're playing the octaves, you can play the notes in alternating manner. Right? So instead of playing the melody, 
And you can play them alternating in the kind of opposite direction, not start with the low note, but start with the high note. And that's gonna introduce a whole other set of you know, confusion or you know, challenges that you have to face in, when you're playing this. And again, in the left hand, Alright, so I've given you a bunch of exercises that work on different aspects of your playing, arpeggios, scales, uh, your weak fingers, right and left hand, uh, octaves, a lot of things that really constitute the sort of heart of, of piano technique, and I hope they'll help you out. Remember, practice them as slowly as you need to get them right. It's not about speed, it's about getting them right. I cannot overstress this. Do not try to play faster than you can. I highly recommend practicing with a metronome. If you've never practiced or you don't own a metronome, that's fine. You can download free apps to your smartphone that will function as a metronome and really, really, you know, you get some pretty advanced stuff. You don't really need all of it. You just need a simple metronome. And that's it. I hope these exercises will help you improve your playing and that you've learned something interesting, and I'll see you next time.